Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make trees for small scale tabletop miniature games. This is a pretty cheap and simple project that's going to help you make quite a lot of terrain for games like Battletech, Five Core, DBA, Chain of Command, any of these games that use smaller scale miniatures. I'm talking 6mm, 10mm or 15mm miniatures. All of these will work fairly well with trees of this scale and this project can be scaled up and down quite significantly. Without further ado, let's get on to the first step, which is going to be trimming our materials down to size. Grab a miniature you want to use as a reference. I'm using this Battletech Battlemaster, which I painted up in my previous tutorial on painting the 4th Deneb Light Cavalry. And I'm going to stand it up next to this dowel. This is a small wooden dowel from a set from the dollar store. I think it was a buck 25 for 10 or 20 of these guys. Very, very cheap. Just score it or mark it, lay it down, put a knife on top, and roll it back and forth until you've got a good groove. That's going to give you a notch that you can break the dowel along in order to make a tree of your desired size. I'm making my trees relatively tall. This makes them suitable for gaming, for example, somewhere like the west coast of North America with your battle mechs, while they're suitable for pretty much normal sized trees for any larger scales, 10 or 15 millimeters, such as I use for DBA or games like Five Core. Once you've scored the wood, break the dowel and Bob's your uncle. Very, very easy to do. Uh, if you do need to use something else, you could use a small razor saw or something to cut all the way through. I recommend you cut a whole bunch of these and do a lot of trees at once. Do it in bulk. This project benefits from it. For my part, I can only fit five in the area I used to film, so I'm only doing five right now. The other material you're going to need for the initial stage of construction is just some one inch washers. I've tried using smaller ones, it doesn't balance so well, so use big ones. Getting onto the actual construction, I'm using a little silicon pad from, it's a hot glue gun holder from the dollar store or something. Lay down some hot glue, place the washer on top and then lay down some more hot glue in the middle for the actual dowel to stick into. The hot glue on the bottom is going to make an even and sticky surface for these trees. It's going to help them balance, it's going to help them be flat, and it's going to help them stick to whatever surface you put them on and give them a little more stability on the tabletop. Once you've stuck the dowel in, put some more hot glue basically to the edges of the washer, maybe just over the edges if you want to extend this a little further, and up the sides of the dowel. This is a project that at every step benefits from being rough, ready, and random. So if you put in a little extra glue down the sides of the washer itself and make the base look not perfectly circular, great, it'll blend in more on your tabletop. If you put some glue that runs up the side of the dowel, it's just a lump in the tree or it's the bottom of a root sticking out. This is really a place for your creativity to shine. If you want more detail, grab matchsticks or something like that and glue those onto the side of the tree to give some sort of branch work. Give a little more detail that way. I'm just going to put one on here, but you could definitely put a whole lot around the edges and make a much more complicated looking tree than the ones that I'm making here for demonstration purposes. Stick that in there, gather up the hot glue, and you're probably going to want to put more hot glue around that. This is great. Again, it just makes for a lumpy tree trunk. You'll see later, A, these are small scale trees. You're not going to see them from up close. You're not going to see them that much and they're going to be on the tabletop. And B, all this lumpiness just helps make that trunk look a little less perfectly rigid than this plain wood dowel would look. Wow, that's a tongue twister. The next step here, grab some cotton balls and hot glue them onto the tree. These are what we're going to use to build up the actual structure of the tree itself. Lay them all around. Try to be a little random with them, but also try to keep the center of gravity above the center of the washer. This is just a stability concern. If you want your trees to be steady, don't build them too high, and don't make the top highest, heaviest part too far off center. Otherwise, they're just going to be tumbly boys. For making coniferous or taller trees, you can go on with a slightly different approach. Take your cotton balls and pull them apart, thin out the center of them and make it kind of a little looser, a little easier to stab through. <laughs> because I'm going to recommend you impale these onto the dowel instead of wrapping them around the sides. If you just stick a whole bunch of cotton balls around the sides, you'll get a lumpy sort of shape that isn't necessarily all that attractive. Whereas if you put them on in layers like this, you may get a layered look that is a little more appropriate to a coniferous tree. It's really up to you, and the effects can vary. In this case, actually, as I build this guy up, I end up with a sort of swoopy pointed top uh, by accident. I kind of assumed that it would settle down and the hot glue would just dry flattening out. It didn't. Uh, I now have a Dr. Seuss tree. <laughs> but a little bit of variety here and there. A, if you make a whole lot of these trees, they're going to blend together and B, variety is great. If they all look the same, they'd be really, really boring. 
To build on the foliage itself, we're going to use papier-mâché. Yeah, that crafting technique you probably learned in grade school, and I don't know if you've done it since then. Um, it's a great way to make a solid shell around the outside of these cotton balls and stiffen everything up, because cotton balls themselves are not a great construction material. So, for those of you who don't know what papier-mâché is, or who haven't done it in a while, water down some white glue, kind of one-to-one, maybe a little more watery than that. And then we're going to grab some toilet paper, and we're going to lay it all around the tops of our trees. Apply the watered down white glue liberally, and use your paintbrush to push it into all the cracks and crevices. You should get a sort of thick, sticky mess all over the top of the tree. If you're having a hard time with your actual toilet paper sticking up and sticking out and not, you know, laying flat where you want it to, grab some isopropyl alcohol with a spray bottle and just spritz some of that on top to wet it. Once it's wet, A, the white glue is going to absorb more readily and go deeper into the toilet paper, which is going to help it be solid anyway. And B, once it's a little moist, it'll lay down and it'll just sort of settle in place. It'll be heavier and it won't stick out as much and bounce back up after you tap it down. By the end, you should have something that looks like this mess. <laughs> Big sticky ball of toilet paper glue and cotton balls. It's going to feel really squishy. Push it into whatever shape you want and try to shape it now because afterwards it's going to dry out and it's going to be very solid. You're also going to want to go in relays and do one tree after the other. Again, this benefits from being done in large batches if you have the space. If you don't have the space, <laughs> I guess do them in small batches. But there's a lot of waiting with this project. There's a lot of waiting for white glue to dry, which kind of sucks. So the more you can do it once, the better you are. We're also going to put a little bit of papier-mâché around the bases. This is going to help just give them a little bit of texture, a little bit of, you know, sticky, uppy oomph, make them look interesting. And it's also, perhaps more importantly, going to give a surface that's really easy to paint, prime, flock, etc. for everything to stick down to compared to metal and or hot glue. I didn't mention this earlier, but you do want your washers to be washed with some hot water and soap before this in case there's any oil or products from the company that are going to make them uh, not take glue or paint very well. I can't speak for every kind of washer, but certainly it's something to, to want to check with. I did it to my washers and they seem to work just fine for this project. Again, Pepe Mache, just toilet paper and white glue with water on all of the surfaces. If it does stick out off the edges, again, this could be left in place if it's not that egregious to make your bases a little uneven. Uh, makes them blend in a little more with the tabletop than a perfect circle might. And if you don't like how much it's sticking out, if it's, uh, you know, blasting off in one direction like Team Rocket or something, uh, then you're going to be able to cut it off afterwards. That's what I'm going to do here. You can see I've got a little flakes here and there sticking off of the bases. Once they've dried, man, these things are solid. They're like rock hard. This is definitely a project that's going to last. It's going to withstand gaming, which I think is the most important thing. It may not look quite as detailed as maybe some uh, tree armatures and sea foam contraptions might, but uh, these are solid trees. They're solid trees you can use, you can bring, you can travel. They, they should be fine. For trees like this, where you put way too much toilet paper on, uh, just go in with an X-Acto knife and trim around the edges. Again, if it's rough and ready and the edge is a little ripply, I'm fine with that. If you're not, you might want to be a little more careful when you're applying the toilet paper. You might want to cut a little closer. Whatever you need to do. But, I'm just saying, for me, rough and ready around the edges is perfectly fine. Trim off anything that's sticking out and doesn't look solid, and then we can move on to the next step. This is all really fun, the papier-mâché making everything solid and come together. It already starts to look a little bit like a tree, and you're going to see it's just going to look better as we get on with the flocking. For flocking, again, I'm sticking to cheap materials here. I'm sticking to materials that are readily available. These are spices. It's bulk oregano from Bulk Barn. Um, if you have Bulk Barns around, you know what that is. If you don't, it's a bulk sort of store for spices, candy, all sorts of materials like that. It's, it's fairly cheap to buy your spices there. So I've got this big bucket of oregano. Oregano being already leaf-shaped is perfect for deciduous trees. In this case, I'm not using watered-down white glue. I'm using thick white glue. I want the white glue to be thick because I want the oregano to settle down into that layer and glue on very solidly. While spices serve very well as flock because of their shape, they also are, well, they're dried spices. They're very crumbly. They aren't evenly shaped, which is both a plus and a minus because that can sometimes mean that their contact area with whatever you're trying to glue them to is very, very small. With a small contact area, these are going to fall off very, very easily. You'll see later on, um, when I get to airbrushing, they're going to blow all over the place, all the loose bits. Um, the way to maximize your chance of having these actually stick down, in my opinion, is to put on a whole lot of white glue and make sure they're really firmly stuck in there. That at least half of all of the little oregano leaves are 
actually settled into white glue, not just sitting on the surface of white glue, if that makes sense. Sprinkle them on, get them all over. Try to avoid having bald spots, but if you do have little bald spots, you can either go back and touch them up later, or if they're really small ones, it's just an uneven texture. It's not going to show up that much. Again, these are wargaming trees. You're going to be looking at them from three feet away on a tabletop while you're gaming. I'm not trying to go in and make a photorealistic, you know, Luke Toen railway diorama tree. This is quick, easy, lots of these guys made up all at once so that you can dress a table very, very well. The white glue being solidly on here in a thick layer as well is going to have two other effects. Number one, it's going to solidify our outer layer because it's going to be quite a lot of glue and it's going to keep making this a particularly strong tree. But B, it's probably going to drip off the bottom into big globs. So this particular drying stage, you might want to check in and just see if that's dripping off too much. And if so, correct it as you go. Dab it around with a paintbrush. Fill in a little more flock where you need to. For coniferous trees, I'm going to use dill instead of oregano. Same kind of logic, whereas oregano looked like leaves, dill is kind of spiky, so it looks a little like needles. These needles are vastly out of scale, but of course if you were using in-scale needles it wouldn't look all that spiky necessarily, and also they would be tiny. So I'm going to use dill, I'm going to sprinkle it all over. Dill is actually easier to apply than oregano, whereas oregano has that weird leafy shape and doesn't always have a good contact area. Dill is very, very small and virtually always finds a good contact. Oh, there's a nice drip virtually always finds a nice contact area. So you're gonna see a lot more of your dill stick on the first try, and you're probably gonna have a lot less bald spots overall. Sprinkle it on fairly uniformly again, and then you're just gonna have to let these guys dry just like you let the other trees dry. If you did the deciduous trees before the coniferous trees, then your other trees should be dry enough now that you can handle them, and if so, you can come in and start applying this dill to their bases. Dill on the bases is not going to serve as our flocking in this case, it's going to serve as a little bit of ground cover. Again, it's to break up the shape of that perfectly round washer and the lumpy hot glue underneath. We're just making the bases more interesting, we're giving them a little bit of texture that everything's going to stick to later, and that will help hide the edges of the bases once we've finished everything up. Whereas on normal miniatures, I tend to always embrace the base, as it were, because they've got those hard, square edges that I can just paint black and just go, okay, sure, this guy's standing on a diorama. Uh, in this case, with the trees, it's not really like that, so I'm trying to hide those edges rather than just paint them and highlight it so that the terrain blends together better, whereas the miniatures stand out a little bit on their own merits. Once you've flocked everything, we're just going to texture the trunks of the trees, uh, and then we're going to be moving on to priming them and painting them. So that was pretty quick. For the actual texturing, I'm using this Agrellan Earth. It's a technical paint from Games Workshop. Um, I'm not a big guy for Games Workshop paints, but uh, if you've watched my recent Battletech videos on the Denigal Guards or the 4th Denied Light Cavalry, you'll have seen that I use this paint uh, experimentally and discovered there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. I use it for battle damage, I used it for the bases, which is I guess the intent, um, and in this case I'm going to use it for tree trunks. Apply it thickly from top to bottom. By doing so, hopefully you'll get these ridges and lumps from the top to the bottom. These will A, help blend in any hot glue. Oh yeah, also pull away the stringy bits so that things don't look weird later. Um, but these will help blend in any hot glue and stuff like that. They'll give a little more texture to the tree so it's not just one perfectly big round dowel. And they'll make sure that the crackling texture that the Agrellan Earth gives is actually in vertical lines, which should look a little bit more like the bark on a tree trunk than if it was applied randomly all over the trunk. Keeping it in this linear fashion just makes sure that everything strikes from top to bottom. Because the Sacrellan Earth actually crackles more where it's thickest. So by leaving these thick vertical lines, you make sure that the crackling happens there. It also, by applying it thick, means that you're going to get a lumpier texture and it helps you blend all the other stuff in, so it all works hand in hand to mean that this technical paint is actually a really, really good way to finish off these trees. With that being done now, we're going to move on to priming, and normally I would caveat this with, oh, I'm using an airbrush, but you could use a normal brush, but honestly, this time I'm going to say, even if you don't own an airbrush, go out and buy like a rattle can primer, a spray can primer from the hardware store, something like that. Uh, do yourself the favor, if you try to do this with a brush, you're going to have some pretty serious issues. Uh, for one, you're going to have a hard time getting everything covered because of the leaves and the texture. And if you have uncovered areas, of course, those aren't going to take paint as well. They're not going to be as well colored. They also are likely to not hold on as tightly. We're using this primer also to hold down the leaves. It's another layer of glue over top that keeps everything solid. 
And if you try to apply it with a brush, you might break the leaves. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, your spices are dried spices. They're crumbly, they're crackly, and they're likely to break if you're hitting them with a paintbrush when they're just freshly applied and they have that chunk sticking out that has not been primed. With a good primer over top, though, you now have this rubbery surface. That means that if you do need to paint it with a brush, you could go in and paint it with a brush. I still don't necessarily recommend it, but here's how I would do it. Grab a big brush, like this one, this is an oil painting brush that I have, and go get a whole lot of paint on the bristles of the brush. Mix together a couple of colors, you know, green, brown, whatever, to get that complex coloration you're looking for. And make sure it's fairly wet. Uh, at first here you'll see it's not as watered down as perhaps it could be, and without being diluted it's not going to flow as well into the cracks. But just tap it on. Tap it on over the top, be fairly gentle, but by tapping you're going to make sure that you can uh, drive some of the bristles at least between the leaves and get into the recesses. If you try dragging your brush across the top, you risk either breaking things or leaving shaded areas underneath leaves because you can't drag it into the crevices. So tap on your coat paint and take advantage of the fact that you're using a brush. If you do have a brush and you have to use that, then at least you have a lot of control over where the colors go. Blend some different colors together, mix some stuff in, do a little brown patch, a green patch, whatever, and just add some interest to the tree. Take advantage of your medium, basically. It's not ideal and you're going to have a really hard time getting really good coverage, but there are some interesting things you could do with it. So that's my recommendation. For my own part though, I'm not going to paint these with a brush, I'm going to paint them with an airbrush because it's both faster and it's easier, and third of the both items, uh, it's going to get way better coverage, way easier. I get to spray this into all the nooks and crannies of the tree and it just happens. The, the, the airbrush is quite magical, honestly, in my list of must-have tools if you really want to get into painting miniatures, the airbrush is quite high. For my colors, I'm just going to blend together some India inks from the Dr. P.H. Martin's India ink set. That's I buy it at Michael's because they offer coupons fairly regularly. It's fairly cheap and they're decent quality India inks. Uh, I just mix those together in the hopper of my airbrush. Now I'm going to use a little brush, uh, one of my crappier brushes with the bristles sticking out in every direction, to just stir it all together and blend it. And I'm going to get this sort of muddy green. This is going to be my mid-tone for the tree that I'm going to apply over the foliage. I'm going to be going in afterwards and highlighting it and then darkening it in various locations. You can see already, compared to the previously applied brush stippling technique, I've gotten much better coverage instantly with the airbrush. There, there's really no comparing it. It's also much quicker. I don't have to keep dabbing the brush and that kind of stuff. I cannot recommend this enough. You could even use a spray can if you wanted to. Um, and just do all of your trees with that particular spray can because we're going to paint the trunks by hand afterwards. So if you had some overspray, it wouldn't be a problem. You don't need the precision. However, by doing it this way with small batches of mixed paint done through an airbrush, I'm actually also going to be varying the color of my trees as I go along. If you use the same color, like you use a pre-mixed color through your airbrush even, or you use a spray can, you're going to get a very even looking canopy in your forests, and I don't find that looks as interesting as having a varied canopy. So I mix it every time and every color is slightly different, and that for me makes for a more interesting forest. Mixing it a little bit of yellow here, I'm making a brighter color that's going to be applied from the top. I'm going to be going more towards yellow on the top and more towards brown on the bottom, and I'm going to apply a very light shading as I do so. I just put in some airbrush flow improver to thin this out some more. I actually want this to apply sort of like a glaze, so I want it to apply thinly and just hint at the yellow over top without being a very striking, stark color. This is again something to add effect at your sort of quote-unquote tabletop distance three feet away when I'm playing my game and I'm looking down at the table. I just want to have a slightly enhanced impression of the light and shadow on this tree. I don't want to actually have, you know, a yellow topped tree necessarily. Not in this case anyway. If you wanted to make some yellow trees, some brown trees, stuff like that, absolutely go for it. One of the trees you probably saw in the thumbnail and you'll see again at the end of the video, I made red with a little bit of orange mixed in so it looked a little um, autumnal I guess. It's very nice and warm and interesting. And the more colors you do, the better off you are. Just like I said, with the odd colored base or odd shaped bases, odd shaped trunks and branches and foliage, everything about this project just screams creativity. Make things different, make things varied, and you'll get a much more interesting forest as a result. Here, as an example, I'm going in with a lot more green for the second tree than I did on the first tree. The first tree is a little muddier, a little browner. This tree is going to be a lot brighter green. Um, and I'm going to have the red tree, I'm going to have the coniferous trees, which are going to be more green as well. 
As I'm doing all of this, I'm also trying to hit the bases of the trees. This will just blend in their bases a little bit, even though we're going to flock them later with actual flocking, static grass flocking. Um, this will just blend the edges of the bases and make them hide a little bit better when we place these on the tabletop. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be black edging these bases, I'm just going to be using color and flock to blend them with my tabletop and make them look more natural. Here I'm just applying a little bit of brown underneath my tree. This just adds a little bit of a darker color, but still a warm underneath the foliage to imply some shading. For the tree trunks, I'm going to go in with a paintbrush again. I want to be a little more precise and be able to cover up anywhere I oversprayed with the airbrush. I'm just mixing together a little bit of brown acrylic paint and white acrylic paint to get a low saturation sort of brownish color. Um, I'm not going full brown because two reasons really. Number one, full brown doesn't look necessarily that realistic from a distance. Not that this looks that much more realistic, but pure brown doesn't look that much like tree bark anyway. And second, this is going to be a higher contrast option where my trees mostly have dark-ish canopies. Having a lighter trunk makes the trunk jump out a little bit more and makes it clear that there's multiple shapes here. I want to continue emphasizing the different shapes just like I would do on a miniature and try to add some contrast between areas. I'm doing that with my trees as well. So it's very clear that they are a tree with a trunk underneath. I'm applying my light brown in concentric circles around the tree. Instead of going vertical like I did with the texture paint, I'm going horizontal. That way it drags across the tops of the texture, the crackling there, and you see it leaves the darker areas dark inside the actual cracks and recesses. And also it adds a little bit of a round texture. It adds some lines, thanks to my brush strokes, just around the tree itself. All of this is sort of just to make up for the fact that the dowels we're using here are very, very smooth, and if I didn't do this, then the tree would look sort of unnaturally smooth. I'm now also going to grab just a little bit of actual straight-up brown on my brush, and while everything's still wet, I'm going to do a couple of vertical lines just to break that up. Again, it's just about creating texture with the brush strokes and creating a little bit more color interest as I go along. There's only so much you can do, maybe, but if you've got some great tricks for painting tree trunks at small scale so they look really good, let me know. I'm also interested in trying out birch at some point. I'll show that on Instagram if I do. For flocking the bases themselves, I use matte Mod Podge and a mixture of static grass, oregano, and a little bit of dill. This is the same mixture I use for all of my miniature bases, and I'm going to use it in this case because I want the bases of my trees to match up with the bases of my miniatures, at least in texture largely, so that everything looks kind of unified. I use matte Mod Podge here and not any of the white glue that we used earlier for the... Um, the actual Pepiba shape, which was a cheaper white glue, a sort of craftsman's white glue from the hardware store in a big gallon jug. Because that other glue, I did try it for flocking bases just to see if, hey, can I use the cheaper options there? <laughs> and it did not dry clear. It dried, I guess, translucent, quote unquote. It was very clearly white under the flock and it didn't look that good. Mod Podge, I've never had any issues with. Dry is clear, first time, every time. So use Mod Podge, that's my recommendation because I can't recommend anything I haven't tried other than that. The flock itself, I apply it just sort of dabbing it on into the Mod Podge. I don't want to press down on it too hard because I don't want to push everything down and make it all flat and too dense. I want everything to still have a little bit of puff, you know, I want fluffy flocks so it looks like grass around the surface and some leaves on the ground that imply that there's a forest. Looks a little weird on the coniferous trees to have the oregano leaves, but hey, if it's in a forest, there's a little bit of everything everywhere. Finally, I just hit these with a little bit of matte varnish and I've got five trees ready for play. This is a really cheap, really easy project. It benefits a lot from creativity and randomness, so just doing a whole bunch of them and throwing whatever you can think of at the table is a great idea. The trees themselves are very sturdy, and while they're not exactly diorama, maybe, they are perfect for wargaming. You can lay them out easily. You could multi-base them if you wanted to make large forest bases, and they will match up perfectly with your miniatures, and they'll survive being transported and traveling quite well because of the layers of glue and primer and varnish that have all gone onto their canopies. I've been working for quite a while on a recipe for making the tabletop trees that I want to have on my tabletop, and this is what I came up with for small scale miniatures. I'm quite proud of it. I'm still working on a recipe for 28 millimeter trees, so larger trees that are equally sturdy, but also look good at that scale. When I come up with that, you can bet that you're going to see it here on the channel. If you got any requests for games, miniatures, whatever that you'd like to see on the channel, please let me know down in the comments. I love to see that kind of stuff. And thank you very much for watching. As usual, until next time, go play some games.